We are at the top of the hour, so I want to welcome everybody to TechSoup and welcome to this special TechSoup hosted online discussion for the top 10 technology picks for nonprofits with small budgets. And as you were coming in, you were letting us know where you're from and the type of budget side that you have. Some of you are starting at zero, some of you are half a million, under 10,000. Welcome, everybody. My name is Aretha Simons from TechSoup, and I'll be your host today. I'm the TechSoup webinar producer, and today I have a special guest. His name is Nick Finn. He is the director of marketing here at TechSoup and full of information. So anything you want to know, um, ask Nick. <laughs> okay, so everybody is on mute because this is webinar style, but I would love if you have a question and you want your question answered directly, type it in the Q&A, type it in the Q&A section. And for everybody who sees a question that you want that question answered to, give it a thumbs up. That way it'll move to the top. Otherwise, continue to chat with each other, engage in the chat section. We love when nonprofits communicate with each other. So that's our housekeeping. We're gonna just jump right in because we have a lot to share. I'm just gonna share my screen and Nick's gonna kind of take over from here, talk about the top 10 technology products that nonprofits use with small budgets. So Nick, welcome. Thank you so much. Good morning, everybody. Um, well, some of you, it's maybe nearing the middle of the day versus the morning, but here on the West Coast, it's 10 a.m. And I'm very excited to be with you. Um, the context for today's uh, webinar is, you know, we're now in June and for a lot of nonprofits, not all of them, but for a lot of nonprofits, June is the final month of the fiscal year. And a lot of folks are asking themselves right now where they should put the last pieces of their budget that may still exist. Lots of nonprofits are planning ahead for um, fiscal 2022 beginning in July. Um, and so this is the time of year when TechSoup really tries to bring it all back together for everybody and talk about the things that have really mattered to nonprofits over the past year in terms of technology. And we use a lot of technology in our daily work. Um, this is a summary of what seems to have been most effective and most interesting. Um, and this year, we're really trying to keep in mind that not all nonprofits are alike. In fact, very few of them are identical. There are lots of ways that we're different from each other. And one of the big ways is, frankly, how large is the budget, staff, and organization of the nonprofit? There are, of course, some nonprofits in the world that are giant with hundreds, if not thousands of employees and multi-million dollar budgets, but there are just as many. In fact, there are more nonprofits that are much smaller working at the community level with much more modest budgets. Many only have one or two staff. Some are entirely staffed by volunteers. Um, and at TechSoup, our mission really is to support all nonprofits regardless of size and to make sure that those nonprofits have access to affordable technology that is modern and that they can learn to use easily and that can be implemented well. So for today's webinar, we really are focusing on smaller nonprofits and the, the products that have really helped them most. Um, and so with that, I wanna go first to what is something that TechSoup really talks about quite a bit, which is how Microsoft can be a real tool for smaller nonprofits. And there are really three things to call out here. The first is Microsoft Office Standard. This is the version of Office that people think about when they think about Microsoft Office. You know, it's the package of Word and Excel and PowerPoint and all those different applications that staff can use to communicate with each other, to create documents, to do basic financial tracking, maybe to do counting of people who attended events, things like that. Um, Office standard is what we call an on-premises product. That means it's a product that you install on a local computer and then um, you use on that local computer. Um, and even if the entire internet were to collapse a minute from now, Office standard would run on your local computer with no problem. And um, it is the 
basic version of Office that lots of nonprofits still rely on. Um, and the, the most recent version of Office Standard that Microsoft released is in 2019. Um, that is the contemporary version. So even though it says 2019, don't think about it as being outdated in any way. It is the modern version of Microsoft Office um, on premises. Um, and for lots of nonprofits, especially smaller ones with smaller, more modest budgets, um, that is the direction that they choose to go. The alternative to Office Standard is for folks who are thinking about the next step. And here we want to go into the idea of cloud adoption. Ah, jargon. What the heck is cloud adoption? We basically all know what the cloud is, right? It's the internet in the sky. We're all connected together by the internet itself. And for most technology companies who build software, it's become clear in the last you know, 15 years that really the best way to do it is not to send people compact disks of software. It's in fact to let people download programs off the internet and then download updates to those programs. Updates can be security updates, new functionality, changes in how the software actually runs, right? And that's different than Office Standard. Microsoft calls these kinds of programs Office in the Cloud. That's called Microsoft 365 or Office 365. The 365 is what keys you into the fact that this is a cloud product. And I think the 365 obviously is 365 days in the year, right? It's always on. You can get to it any time of the day, but it's something that involves the internet and you bring those updates and you download that uh, software onto your computer off the web, and then you get updates off the web as well. Now, what's great about Microsoft 365 is that for smaller nonprofits, you can actually get the business premium version of this. The first 10 licenses are free. So that is a really, really great thing to keep in mind. If, and TechSoup does believe this, if your nonprofit really is interested in doing a cloud strategy of really using the cloud and leveraging it for what it's great at, which is collaboration, it's security, it's having your things accessible. And in the time of a global pandemic, tons of nonprofits really found that that cloud-based strategy was really, really important when you've got a remote workforce who are no longer together in the same building or in the same office, cloud applications are really the way to go. And so Microsoft 365 Business Premium is something that we have really found appeals to smaller nonprofits with smaller budgets, especially because you have those first 10 licenses for free. TechSoup has services to support this kind of stuff. If you're concerned about implementing it, we can help you, we can help support you in that process. The third thing from Microsoft that lots of small nonprofits really still rely on, of course, is Windows. And there are two Windows products that TechSoup really provides that are most helpful to nonprofits with small budgets. There's a Windows update, and then there's also the entire Windows platform itself. We have both of those, and they are available at significantly lower prices through TechSoup. Um, and so small nonprofits can benefit from these three things. Again, Office Standard, Office 3 or Microsoft 365 Business Premium, and then Windows, right? Those are core applications that help nonprofits stay functional, keep your staff able to talk to each other, and to engage in the daily work that keeps everything running. All right, so that's Microsoft. The next thing I want to really touch on is the broader issue of security and a new partner for TechSoup, which is Avast. Um, Avast provides security software that you would use to, for instance, block viruses from affecting your local computers, right? And in fact, we have found over time that the Avast antivirus program in particular is the most popular of the Avast line that we carry at TechSoup. In the era of the cloud, and again, going back to that notion of everybody working remotely and being in separate places, it's incredibly important, no matter what size your nonprofit is, 
that you make the effort to secure all the computers and the network that you work on. We can no longer afford to ignore security as a primary function of what your technology has to achieve. Every week we hear some horror story from somewhere about an organization or company that didn't take appropriate security steps and they end up being hit with ransomware attacks or phishing emails or being spoofed and maybe losing money in the process. These are all preventable. These are all preventable by thinking ahead and taking the necessary security precautions. And Avast is one of the partners that TechSoup has found in the past year is really able to provide that level of service and security for nonprofits. And so if you're not sure what to be doing with your security options right now, definitely encourage you to take a look at the Avast offers that TechSoup has in the donations catalog. And um, make sure, even if it's not Avast, that you have some kind of security uh, process protocol and software running on your computers and on your network to make sure that you are not compromised by any of the kinds of attacks that we still see on a daily basis. All right, moving on to top tech pick number four, Intuit QuickBooks. So QuickBooks has been a staple of what nonprofits have gone to TechSoup for for years. Anybody who runs bookkeeping or accounting services knows that the old days of doing this all on paper just is not good enough. And I've talked to more than one nonprofit staffer over the past year who, when the pandemic hit, realized how many of their back office and financial processes still relied on processing paper. And in some cases, that meant somebody had to actually go into the office still, process paperwork. Maybe there was somebody else who had to be in the office at the same time. And it became a real thing for nonprofits to have to figure out how are we going to have two people in the same office at the same time? The real issue, of course, is why are we still relying on paper to run our accounting and financial activities? QuickBooks is the alternative that lots of nonprofits have turned to over time. It is one of the best ways that I know of, that TechSoup knows of, for nonprofits to keep their accounting in order, to process the paperwork as they need to, and to make sure that the nonprofit's finances are organized, and when year-end reporting comes around, that it's easy to produce. Um, it has always been in the five years that I have been working with TechSoup with nonprofits, one of the top picks, frankly, that nonprofits of all sizes have been using. And so again, if you're a small nonprofit trying to understand how to use technology to better manage your finances, I would start with QuickBooks through TechSoup. It really has proven to be one of the staples that nonprofits have relied on for many, many years to keep that going. All right. Moving to number five in a related area, DocuSign. So when I was just speaking about the need to process paperwork, sometimes that also means getting somebody's signature on paperwork just to authorize perhaps a transaction or to get a contract legally signed. There are lots of instances where nonprofits need, small, uh, need to be able to sign paperwork. DocuSign is our solution of choice in that regard in some ways because it lets nonprofits digitally sign things and gather digital signatures. And so again, it takes paperwork out of the equation and instead you're levering technology and digital capacity. So DocuSign is one of the programs that nonprofits have taken from TechSoup for many years now. And it again has proven itself, particularly in the time of the pandemic, as one of the top picks, especially for smaller nonprofits when they need to get some paperwork signed. All right, moving on to number six. We all know this one. We're on it right now. It's practically become a verb the same way Googling things has. Yes, Zoom. Uh, Zoom has connected uh, people across the globe during the pandemic 
um, in ways for some of us that we're used to and for many others that we're not. Um, but Zoom has been in the TechSoup catalog for a few years now. And um, when the pandemic hit last year, for sure, it was one of the most popular options. Um, and uh, we have it in this list because while it's not the only option, it did indeed prove to be one of the most popular options. And if you're a smaller nonprofit, and maybe you don't know all the things that are in the TechSoup catalog, um, Zoom is one of the options that I strongly encourage you to look at uh, and, and think about using as a tool to connect your staff and keep them able to speak to each other face to face. Um, and, you know, as I say, we're using it right now. It's a, it is a great platform for keeping, keeping everybody on the same page. All right, moving to number seven. Here is a really, really popular TechSoup partner, Adobe. And I'm going to spend a little time here because Adobe has several different offers that are of interest. But I want to frame Adobe in a big picture way because one of the big uses of technology for nonprofits is communications. It's how we communicate with donors. It's how we communicate with staff, with board members, members of the public, journalists, almost everybody that we communicate as a nonprofit. And TechSoup is one, which is why I keep saying we. Um, almost every way that we communicate with stakeholders external to our nonprofit can really benefit from Adobe products. We all know about PDFs, right? Portable document format. That was invented by Adobe. They're the folks who put that together in the first place. Um, and so Adobe Acrobat, which is how you create PDFs. It's not the only option, by the way. There are certainly lots of other programs that you can create PDFs, but I think Adobe Acrobat is probably the best way to do it. Um, and uh, we have two versions of Adobe Acrobat. There's, a, there's an on-premises and then there's a document cloud version. Pro DC is what we call that. DC stands for document cloud. So again, in the same way that we have on-premises and then cloud versions in Microsoft, that's true of Adobe Acrobat from Adobe at TechSoup as well. So for the basics of creating those documents that perhaps you then need to get signed using DocuSign, um, Acrobat is pretty much the standard on that stuff. But it's not the only Adobe offer, by the way. Um, Adobe Creative Cloud, I think, is probably, to me, the most interesting. Adobe over the years has created a suite of different programs that let people create amazing digital media. And I'm talking about programs like Photoshop, which probably everybody has heard of on this call, where you can manipulate photos, convert them to black or white, shrink them down if they're too big for your website. Maybe they need a little bit of adjustment. Maybe you have a graphic artist on staff or you work with an outside contractor. I almost guarantee that if they're using an Adobe product, they're probably using Photoshop, but not just Photoshop. There's also Illustrator, InDesign, Dreamweaver, and several other products. And they're all condensed together in what's called Adobe Creative Cloud. If you work with an outside design firm, they may well have their own version of it or use other products as well. But if you are a person at your nonprofit who creates digital media or is responsible for handling the communications, um, then Adobe Creative Cloud really does stand out to me as one of the essential pieces of a modern communications technology stack, meaning a set of programs that you really rely on. So I want to call out Creative Cloud as really one of the most interesting offers from TechSoup uh, from Adobe um, and definitely encourage you to take a look at that. All right, moving on to number eight. In the same vein, when we talk about communications, um, for most nonprofits, your website itself is the primary communications device you really have. It's, it's the public face of the nonprofit. Um, 
anybody in the world can go to your site, learn about you, read about your mission. Maybe they can read about some of the metrics that you talk about in terms of how successful you are at accomplishing your mission, how many people or communities you serve. Um, and of course, they're going to be able to look at probably press clippings, some great photos of the work that you're doing. Um, but that website itself is a piece of technology, right? Not something that most of us had 25 years ago. It was very new at that point in time to even have a website. Today, it's standard practice. You have to have it. And it's not the easiest thing, especially for a smaller nonprofit that may not have the staff with the technical expertise to build a website or keep it updated. So one of the new lines of um, work TechSoup has engaged in over the last few years has been to develop services that we offer to nonprofits in addition to just the product catalog. So our product catalog has been where we partner with companies like Microsoft or Adobe or DocuSign, and we help folks get products from those companies you know, at extremely affordable rates. The services are products that TechSoup itself has created. And so website services are something that we now offer the nonprofit community um, in an effort to help folks be able to get their websites up, running, functional, and doing the things that they need them to do. Now, make no mistake, it's not necessarily the cheapest thing in the world to pay outside work to build your website for you. But given how important it is to have that site, I encourage you to have a conversation at least with the services department if you feel like that's something that you want to take on to investigate what it is we could do and how we could support you in that. And even if it's not working with TechSoup, lots of smaller nonprofits do have an outside contractor that they already work with on their website. That might even be a person who can work with TechSoup to help you meet your needs. But TechSoup website services are definitely an area where small nonprofits can greatly benefit. And I encourage you to take a look at that offer in the catalog as well. Um, next offer, number nine, is TechSoup Boost. TechSoup Boost is a product that TechSoup itself created which is really designed to help organizations who want to be a little experimental in their use of technology. It provides deeper discounts on things that are in the catalog already. And those objects in, that cat in the Boost catalog in particular change from quarter to quarter. And so if you're interested in trying lots of different things, Boost is a subscription your nonprofit might be interested in. Um, Especially last year during April and May, we found a lot of nonprofits suddenly subscribing to Boost um, because it provided access to greater discounts across a host of things. Some of it we've talked about today, but take a look at TechSoup Boost. Um, it'll save you a little bit more on some of the items in the catalog. And as I say, because it changes all the time, um, you'll have the opportunity to maybe do a little bit of experimentation with some of the different products that your nonprofit would try. And then finally, number 10, TechSoup hardware. And so let's stick on this one for a minute. Anybody who's tried to buy laptops, desktops, or other hardware during the last year knows that we have broadly across the market seen prices go up. We've seen supply really constrained. There have been big issues with semiconductor manufacturing shortages globally. That has impacted the entire tech, hardware tech market globally. Um, we're starting to bounce back from that. Things are getting a little bit easier to find, um, but TechSoup maintains some really robust partnerships that mean that we can help nonprofits find the hardware that they need. Um, we of course have great relationships with Dell, with HP and with Lenovo. And then we also have a refurbished hardware option um, and refurbished hardware is not something you should ever be scared of. It is not taking a computer that's 15 years old and then just reselling it on the market. Refurbished hardware is taking modern computers that have been, as they say in the biz, perhaps lovingly pre-owned, maybe usually for a short period of time, 
And for them to become refurbished means they actually have to come back to a, to a refurbishing supplier who has to run tests, make sure all the hardware is running properly, maybe replace a piece or two if it's not running well, um, and certify that this computer is, is good to go. It provides the level of functionality um, that the purchaser needs. Um, and the great thing about these refurbished hardware options is they're often less expensive than a brand new version. They're also a very green and environmentally conscious way to purchase hardware because instead of just buying stuff and then throwing it away, you're giving it a second life. And so between the two, the cost savings and the green angle of it, um, we have thousands of nonprofits who rely on TechSoup for refurbished hardware each year. Um, and I encourage you to take a look at that program as well. So with that said, that is the top 10 picks for organizations with small budgets from TechSoup. And I just wanna go back to this notion now that I started at the top with of the fiscal year end and planning ahead. Particularly on security, um, it's very important that you do have a plan in place and take a look at Avast or any of the other security offerings from TechSoup um, and make sure that you've got a robust security option in place um, and that your computers and your hardware are protected. Um, but beyond that, the general sense in the nonprofit community is, you know, the world is starting to turn back on again. We're coming out of lockdowns people are going out in public. The mask requirements have gone away in a lot of places, not everywhere. Um, but there is a general reemergence, and that includes a reemergence for nonprofits as well, who we have all been working under great duress. And, and now it's the opportunity to kind of lift our heads up again and look at what's coming up over the course of the next year and start making investments in the staffing and the technology and the operations that we really need. It's a slow recovery for all of us for sure. Um, but I want you to know that at the center of TechSoup's work is the sense that we, we really care about the nonprofits who are serving our communities. That's the whole point of why TechSoup exists, right? As I said earlier, we are a nonprofit ourselves. We operate with the same kinds of constraints and budget realities that you do. Um, but we really think that the nonprofit movement as a whole provides amazing value in the United States and around the world. We are here to support it. And we have this perspective that technology can play a powerful role in supporting nonprofits and helping them achieve their mission. That's what we're here for. So all these products that I've just listed Please know that when you work with TechSoup to get some of this or even implement some of it, we have your best interests at heart. We're not a for-profit who are just trying to sell this stuff. We really think that it's helpful for other nonprofits. So I see a lot of questions have popped up in chat here. I'm going to stop here and um, let's see if there's any particular ones that we want to call out or explore any further and um, provide more answers to. Yeah, there were a few. Um, Alisa has been in here in the chat room. She works in customer service. Um, she didn't have access. So I was like slacking her the questions and, and answering them afterwards. So I think a lot of them have been answered, but I do want to go over them again so that we repeat them. Before I do that, Nick, um, Pat wanted to know if you would repeat the list. Uh, just so you know, um, he's going to repeat the list, but this is being recorded and you'll get the recording within 48 hours, but he'll just go over the list um, real quickly. And then I'll just sure. be getting the questions queued up. <laughs> All right. So we started at number one. You can hear me like I, I after after being so mean about paper, here I am holding paper in my hands. <laughs> so, um, but we started off with Microsoft, right? So Office Standard or Microsoft 365, which is the cloud version. And as I was pointing out, Business Premium has 10 licenses for free under that. And then um, also we have Windows from Microsoft, right? That's a really important one. Number three was Avast, A-V-A-S-T. They're a newer security partner for TechSoup, well-known and well-regarded globally, but an excellent way to make sure that your computers and networks and endpoints are protected. Next was Intuit QuickBooks. 
which is financial management, bookkeeping, tracking your monies, making sure that all the, all the data is locked down in that regard. After that, we talked about DocuSign, which is a great way for, for uh, nonprofits to not have to rely on paper to get contracts signed and documents signed, right? After that, we talked about Zoom. It's what we're doing right now. We're on Zoom together. Um, but again, uh, as, a, as a way to keep staff connected and also to connect, frankly, with the folks that rely on your nonprofit. Lots of nonprofits are doing Zoom calls with them. Um, you know, what they call their members or their constituents or folks that they serve. Um, after Zoom, we talked about Adobe. Um, and in particular, it was Adobe Acrobat and then also Adobe Creative Cloud, both really strong products for any communications needs in particular from nonprofits. Then we talked about website services. Um, that's a new kind of consultation package that TechSoup uh, is offering to help nonprofits who need help on their websites. After that, we talked about TechSoup Boost. Boost is a catalog you subscribe to from TechSoup. It, it does have a fee associated with it, of course, but it's, uh, it gives you extra savings on a bunch of different products that really rotate on a quarterly basis. And so we found uh, generally that Boost is great for nonprofits who want to be a little more experimental and maybe want access to more products, but want to save a little bit extra at the same time. And then finally, we talked about hardware, um, in particular, the refurbished um, hardware program, as well as the relationships we have with uh, Dell and Lenovo and HP. And I also want to point out, by the way, that um, Mobile Beacon has been another really strong program at TechSoup over the past year. Mobile Beacon provide hot, internet hotspots through TechSoup very affordably. And I know there's at least one person from a library here on the, on the webinar today. And certainly libraries have been very interested in Mobile Beacon because a lot of folks, particularly where there are internet issues or broadband issues and not everybody has access to it at home, libraries have been a big place. Um, where folks have come to get online, or even in some cases, be able to take a, a mobile hotspot with them. So that is the top 10 list. Awesome, thank you so much. I have a question um, in the Q&A. This is from Maureen. Um, she, they are a small church. And her question is, we're using a very old product. It's called Meme Info. It's spelled M-E-M -E Info to manage members' demographic info, their pledges, their contributions, and produce statements sent by email or snail mail to contributors. It costs less than $200 a year. I would like something to interface directly to our accounting, which is now in QuickBooks obtained through TechSoup. She says, what's the alternative should we use, um, should we be looking at for prices, for competitive prices? So something that integrates with QuickBooks we have donor perfect, donor perfect, excuse me. Donor perfect works well with QuickBook. I don't know if you've um, looked at that on TechSoup's website. Yeah, I, I don't know Meme in particular. I don't know the product that you're speaking of, but um, I think what generally you may be asking about, and I'll just I'll take a stab in the dark here, but I think what generally what you're asking about is what a lot of folks would call a customer relationship database or, or management, customer relationship management, um, or CRM is the acronym you may hear people uh, bandy about. Now, of course, we're nonprofits. We don't necessarily think of ourselves as having customers, but the idea is the same. It's a database that you maintain of your supporters, your members, all the all the people who interact with your nonprofit. And it allows you to segment out, you know, here's a group of supporters, we need to send this email to them. Here's some members over here who have a concern about a specific issue. So there are several CRMs available uh, in the TechSoup catalog. Um, but to be honest, without knowing more about your exact use, I'm not gonna recommend a specific one, but I will say that I think CRM is what you wanna do some research around and see if that is the, the type of product that you're thinking about. Mm -hmm. um, in some cases for very small nonprofits, Microsoft Outlook itself, which is part of Office Standard, the on-prem version, as well as Microsoft 365, Outlook itself 
has a database of contacts in there. And for small organizations, that itself may be enough for you to be able to you know, keep folks organized. <clears throat> I think there are plenty of integrations available for Outlook, but I would encourage you to just start by researching CRMs and see if that's exactly what you need. And if not, please come back to TechSoup. You can chat with uh, folks in the support services team or um, just email us and we can steer you in the right direction once you know specifically, you know, exactly what it is you're looking for. So I think that answers your question also, um, Centuria, because she was asking what's the best CRM system that seam seamlessly integrate with QuickBooks. Um, we also have uh, lots of webinars and courses on these products, so it can kind of give you a better idea of how it integrates for you. Um, Centir Centurina, excuse me if I pronounce your name wrong, she says, we use Zoom, the free version, to teach online. We wanted to activate a plan to avoid the 40-minute limit but we have 15 volunteers who work one to two hours per week, each one, and sometimes at the same time. So for what I understood, we should activate an account for each one and that's too expensive. What can we do? Is there another or cheaper option with the same functions? So I could answer this. You, what you could do is create an account and have one password and login for everybody to use so that you don't have to create different Zoom accounts, especially if this is for your business. So right now we have an offer, I think it's $57 for TechSoup. So I hope that answers your question instead of you having multiple accounts for 15 different people. Lester says, if a person serves as an officer for two different nonprofits, can the individual represent both with TechSoup? Sorry, one more time, I lost the end of that. If a person serves as an officer for two different nonprofits, can the individual represent both with TechSoup? I guess when they're signing up? Yes, you, you can. Um, but the trick is to think of it this way. You need a separate account for each of the nonprofits, right? Um, we have plenty of people who work with TechSoup um, on behalf of more than one nonprofit. Some are, for instance, there are some board members who serve maybe on two or three different nonprofits. Um, so yes, you can do that, but you need to have a separate account set up for each of the nonprofits themselves and then have yourself associated with each of those accounts to be able to place orders on their behalf. Okay, thank you. Kim wanted to know, do we offer website redesign services? Um, <clears throat> TechSoup does not directly offer website redesign. We partner with an organization called the TAP Network, who are wonderful, um, and they do do website redesign. Um, but that partnership begins with the consultation process I was talking about earlier when we were going through the list of top 10. So um, that consultation process really helps us understand where a nonprofit is in their own digital journey. Like what kind of website do they need? Um, are they really prepared to take the steps necessary to set up a website? Um, because um, you know it, it, it is a tricky process and it, it requires some expertise. So there's a little bit of fact finding ahead of time that we have to do. So we would partner with TAP Network on that kind of thing. But the real, the real trick is to go through that the website services assessment first. Okay. So um, PJ said, do you have any knowledge of an online site that supports voting and vote counting groups for groups of about 100? His second question also, does TechSoup support Mac products? So do we have a system or software that support voting or vote counting? So to the first question, that's a great question. Very interesting. I've not heard it before. Um, and I don't have an answer for it, to be perfectly honest. Uh, I don't know that we have a platform that we offer that handles vote counting. Um, but thanks for bringing it up, because one of the things we do during these webinars is we try to listen for what people are asking for um, and then go back to our product teams and, and you know, suggest that we go out and find it. So first thing, thanks for the question. Um, the second question, which I lost again, was... Um, 
does TechSoup support Mac products? Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, we do. Um, it, you know, uh, I'm not going to say every single platform we offer comes in Mac and PC version, but I can tell you that the major ones that folks come to us for, almost all of them have a Mac version where that's appropriate. So we definitely have those. Okay. We, Katarina says we are using Google, or excuse me, G Suite for nonprofits. What could be the main advantages to switching to Microsoft Office 365? Oh, gosh. You know, um, that's really, it is the personal preference of, of the folks in the nonprofit, right? Um, you know, I'll be, I use both every day, to be perfectly honest. And I think that's the path a lot of people end up going down is, is you find yourself in several different systems. And that's, that's not wrong in any way, by the way. I think for, for me, it really opens up how I can communicate with different people. Um, I think that uh, for a lot of digital platforms, whether it's G Suite or Microsoft Office or Adobe Creative Cloud, you know, we all have ones that we just like better than we like other ones. And it's almost intuitive, kind of in the sense that you you like some people better than you like other people. There's an intuition to it. Some platforms just, they work for you. They, they seem to function in a way that makes sense, but, 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 not, but, but for you and maybe not everybody else. So I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna pick one over the other, but to tell you that follow your intuition on that stuff and there's nothing wrong with using both at the same time if you want. Um, yeah. Okay, great. Uh, I think the, the seed of life, how or where do you apply for Office 365 license for nonprofits um, through TechSoup? I'm pretty sure Alicia put the link in, in the chat room, so I'm sure you have the link by now. Um, Maureen, does TechSoup offer help looking at a nonprofit's whole tech picture to suggest improvements, networking, hardware, software, especially the whole thing? What a great question. Um... Here's my mediocre answer, sort of. Um, the, the best thing to do, honestly, like you will know more about what your nonprofit needs than we do. The best thing I can recommend is understand kind of where the shortfalls are for your nonprofit and then make and come to the TechSoup site, look at the catalog and look at our blog. Between the two, I promise you, you will find kind of the direction you're looking for you will it will help you choose what you should be prioritizing um, we don't do straight up assessments with nonprofits right now of, of of their entire technology stack now one reason is because we work with almost 300,000 nonprofits across the US alone right and it you can imagine how hard it would be <laughs> if we had to do that with every single one but for specific pieces of your technology stack, for instance, the, the website stuff I mentioned earlier before, there, there is stuff in the catalog to help you assess that stuff properly. I do know that we have in development some tools that are similar to what you're asking about where a nonprofit could go through a series of questions um, to try to understand better where they are in their technology adoption and, and where they wanna to get to and how we can be more helpful. Um, but the fact that you're asking that question, I think just says, it, obviously you realize that there's a need at your nonprofit to kind of do that assessment, lead it internally, and then look at all the TechSoup content we have. And I think between the two, you'll make pretty good progress. And then um, I would suggest starting there. That's a good answer, Nick. So Erica says, I know this wasn't in the webinar, but Dashlane is a great password management system. Can you explain the offering to TechSoup? Our organization already has purchased a business premium plan, but would like to take advantage of the savings through TechSoup. Dashlane, I have heard of that one. Yeah, I don't use Dashlane myself, to be perfectly honest. Um, so I can't, I, I'm not super informed about how to explain the product um, with regard to your question. It sounds like you are already using it and you're just trying to understand what the TechSoup deal is on it. Um, I'm seeing in chat that Alicia did put in there. Um, uh, yeah, it doesn't look like you could change the price of a retail subscription you already have you would have to do a new subscription through TechSoup. 
Um, and the way the Dashlane offer works, particularly through us, is you pay a small admin fee. And for that, you get a 50% discount from Dashlane on the product. Thank you. And thank you, Alicia, for um, jumping in there. And I'm going back through the chat to make sure I didn't uh, miss any questions from earlier. Um, Adobe versus Microsoft Publisher versus Canva. Does Adobe require more information for new users? Um, Alisa answered this. She said yes and no. So yeah, because somebody said, I imagine Adobe products require a higher level of training. Um, they do. They, they, are not, uh, they are not the thing that you immediately open and go, aha, I understand instantly how this works. Um, I've used Creative Cloud for many years um, and often find that when I go back into it to do something, I have to remind myself how some of it works because it can be sophisticated. Um, but like all technology, the thing is, once you know how to use it, wow, it's amazing what you can do with it. Yeah, this is a great question. Um, does TechSoup have a comparison tool of your products like Exceed versus Light Green Light? We don't. <laughs> we don't. Um, that, that is an interesting question. We, we don't have that. Um, but again, like I said, I think we are we are working in the background on some assessment tool that will that, that maybe fill some of that gap. Okay, so Brenda, yes, we did record the session and it will be available within 48 hours. If for everybody who signed up via email, because I know sometimes people share the links, um, which is great. We want you to share the information. All of our webinars, we want you to share and invite other uh, nonprofits so that we all can learn. But if you signed up for it via email, you will get a recording of this within 48 hours. So I'm gonna go back to the chat room. Um, somebody said, I'm paying for QuickBooks month to month. We'll be able to convert it to, will we be able to convert to a subscription at TechSoup to be a TechSoup subscription? Yes, you. yeah, you can convert to a TechSoup subscription. And I, I'm fairly certain that there's no problem with moving your data into that TechSoup subscription. Um, you know, as I say, we've been working with uh, with QuickBooks for a long time. Okay, these are great questions. Anybody else have any questions? And I love that in the beginning we had large nonprofits and lots of brand new nonprofits that said our budget is zero. We're just starting out. So I'm, I hope you learned a lot today. For a tech challenge person, this webinar is extremely helpful. That means a lot to us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh yeah, you guys are coming in. I just tried to convert QuickBooks to tech and it did not go up well. So um, would you, Melanie, would you put your contact, actually, Alisa, would you put your contact information there? And um, Melanie, would you contact Alisa so we can help you with that, help you converting your QuickBooks over through TechSoup? The chat uh, will be available as well. So the chat will be available as well, yes. Okay, great, great, good. Alisa has her information in there. And if you have any questions about customer service, um, she'd be the person to contact. So we're getting ready to wrap up. You can continue typing your questions in here, but would you share with us one, one takeaway today? What was the one thing you, when you heard it, you were like, aha, oh my goodness. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, that's cool. Okay, that's good to know. I need to buy that or I need to do this or I need to switch to that. Share one thing that you, one good takeaway today. The services piece was new info, good. I didn't know we had Zoom. I know a lot of people didn't and you can get a great, great discount here for Zoom. Don't try to convert existing QuickBooks into um, TechSoup QuickBook, terrible experience. No, you will not get all your data unless things have changed. Oh no, David, we don't like to hear that. We wanna know what happened and, and uh, of course, it's, it's QuickBooks software, so that may be something you have to reach out to QuickBooks as well. DocuSign, yes, DocuSign is an amazing product that we have. Um, Office 365 license was new to me. Yep, you're welcome. Thank you, Seed of Life. Um, we need to do an assessment for our overall technology. So always good to do that at the beginning of the year when you're doing your strategic planning um, that I could use Microsoft and Google. 
CRM integration with QuickBooks. Somebody put in the, in the Q&A section. DocuSign and Adobe are available. Yes, there are so many products. We want you, before you, when you get ready to look for your technology or any software, come to TechSoup. Um, what there's a statistics that says like over 70% of nonprofits go to TechSoup to search for a software or not or hardware before they go purchase it because they wanna make sure they get the best deal. And you wanna make sure that you're using your money wisely too, because that's what the, the donors, you know, they want you to do. They want you to use your money wisely. The first 10 licenses of Microsoft Office 365 is free, yep. Yeah, that's on the business premium package in particular. So, so um, that's an important thing to remember because you know, as you can imagine, the, the names of these products can get a little bit squirrely sometimes. You're like, is it this? Is it that? Is it a Ford? Sure, there's a Ford, but there's many types of Ford. So it's the, it's the Microsoft 365 business premium plan. Right, right. So PJ said he was not aware of a vast. There are so many products here, so many um, partners here, I would say that. So make sure you just take some time and just go through the, the products page and just look through things, you'll be surprised. I wasn't I want, sure what Boost was, go ahead. Yeah, let me quickly add to that, that strangely one of the things that makes it tricky when you're lo looking for products on sites is when the navigation is a little bit slow. But the good news is we've, we've just made some big updates to the back end of techsoup.org. Um, so if you've had trouble in the past with pages loading a little bit slowly or not being able to get around the navigation, Give it a try again. It's it's a lot faster now, and I think um, you know that that makes that makes looking at all the different offers we have a lot easier. Somebody said, um, um, Cheyenne, thank you. Um, you said that you gave you a great idea of the types of tech available and what might work for libraries. So, David, even though you're a five hundred one c three, your organization was shot down for Office three sixty five. Hmm. Nick, thoughts. Yeah, I, I don't know the specifics there, David. I'm sorry. I, I've been seeing your comments in chat, and I'm I'm sorry you've had that experience. But um, yeah, if uh, I, you know, we'll we'll follow up with folks after the after the webinar. Maybe we can check a little bit more about what happened there. Good. And Maureen, great webinar. Thank you. We'll take a fresh look at these products. Thank you so much. Awesome, awesome. So there's a question back in the Q&A um, from Gladys. I may have missed this, but can we consult with somebody about the May offerings? to find what will what will service our organization best. We are relatively small, but we're in a growth spurt. Good. Oh, okay, many, the question was many. Can, I'm gonna read it again then. Can we consult with somebody about the many offerings to find what will service our organization best? Okay, yes, that's, that's the question she asked. Who would be um, the best I person? Again, uh, what I encourage you to really do is go through that catalog and look at the blog as well. If, if you can't find the TechSoup blog, by the way, it's under the resources item in the navigation on the site. Um, some folks don't realize that we've got a blog because they don't see it under there, but it is full of, I think, <laughs> very helpful information to, to kind of answer those questions. Um, the consultate, the one-on-one -on -one consultations for us across the entire tech app, as I said, are that it's hard just because of the sheer volume of nonprofits that we're working with. But like in the case of, uh, of website development, like there was a specific product there, but, oh yes, I see Brenda saying, yes, she didn't realize there was a blog. That's right. Under the resources uh, section of the TechSoup website, there is the blog. And um, I work with the folks who work on the blog and believe me, they are churning out something new almost every day. Yeah, and it's amazing too. Sergio, um, we hear you, we see you. You said our shopping cart has been a little bit wonky. Uh, we, we hear you. Yeah, Sergio, it's true. As we've been doing some of these backend updates um, to the website, it has definitely caused some sticky moments for that shopping cart. And I apologize. Thanks for your patience. Um, you know, give it a try again. And I think you should have a better experience now. Okay. So, um, David, lots, lots of comment on 365 denial. Microsoft thinks that we are a club, not a charity. I guess your status, your 501c3 status, because there's mm. different types of 501c statuses. So uh, I'm not sure. Okay. 
Good, good, great questions. Um, and Francisca, I see you in here. Thank you um, for coming in and sharing your knowledge and, and, and providing comments in the chat as well. Uh, Marvis said, I'm excited to go back and see the products that may work for, for the organization. Great, great. We wanna thank you for spending this hour with us. We know you have lots of things you um, could be doing and we appreciate your time. Um, most of all, as you're taking care of everybody else, I tell all nonprofits, you're taking care of everybody in the community, make sure that you take time to take care of yourself as well. Nick, do you have any closing words? Only I just, I wanna say thank you to each of you um, doing the work that you're doing in your communities. Like I said, we work with so many nonprofits, um, but it's always amazing to me when you when you kind of hear the individual stories from folks of, of what it is that they're actually doing. Um, you know, everybody on this call has made the choice to serve their communities and, and serve the folks um, around them through that nonprofit work. And again, TechSoup's perspective is we really think that tech can help you. And we care that tech can help you because we really think the work you're doing is amazing. Um, and so I just want to thank all of you. I know it's been an incredibly difficult uh, year and a half. Um, as I said, I hope that we're really kind of emerging from that now. Um, but we're here. We're here for you. And uh, we thank you for all the work you do. Yeah, thank you. And please fill out the survey. It's only four questions. I'm going to post a, the link right here in the chat. And we would love your comments and your feedback. Thank you so much. I'm gonna leave it open for a moment because I know when I close it, it'll shut down. Thank you. This was great. Thank you, Larry. We love your thank yous. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we can't get enough of it. Keep them coming, keep them coming. Thank you for your thank yous. Yes, yes. <laughs> thank you. Awesome. Brenda said this was fabulous. Great, thank you so much. Very helpful. Awesome. Awesome, great. Awesome, okay, well, I'm gonna close out, please. Again, please fill out the survey and we'll see you on our next um, events. Go to the events page on the community, sign up for all the free webinars, sign up for the paid webinars too, excuse me, the paid, the paid courses. There, I mean, what you get from the paid courses, you can bring your whole team, sit in front of the course and learn. Everybody can learn at the same time and the prices, is incredible. I mean, I, I'm, I'm speechless when I see what it costs. Some of them are $57 and you're getting experts who come and teach you, you know, how to um, grow, start and maintain your nonprofit. So make sure you go to the courses page and sign up for the courses as well. Yes, you will have the chat and you will have the recording. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.